roles precede the personality playing them. And Esper knows that to change an archon, you must start with an architecture. Of course, the mechanism of arrangement predicts future innovations, and it pre predicts the trajectories of those future innovations. Everything that has form attenuates itself differently in response to its environment. And if you can predict the pattern that that trajectory will take. This is the law by which the equilibrium of the whole universe is maintained in orderliness through established habits. The law forces every living thing and every inanimate particle of matter to adhere to and follow the vibrations of its environment, including, of course, the physical habits and the thinking habits of mankind. You can form the final shape before it's conceived of. Well, that's what it means to be an esper of the essence. I've been using a phrase a lot, a phrase, esper of the essence, but I haven't clarified what an esper is, <laughs> so it's probably pretty unclear what that means. So, an esper is attempting to relay a signal, a signal which changes reality. An esper is a person who has exceptional influence on key ideas in human themes. A person who's, or something whose symbolic systems are not only personal, but also represent global attitudes and core conflicts. I might need to explain this a little bit more. I have a colored animal that has always been special to me, and I know what it represents symbolically. So when it appears in my life, it has a direct and obvious message that I can interpret. But if I'm an esper, I may start to notice the colored animal I've coded to myself. I've coded myself to notice. It's appearing far more obviously and more often than it did in the past. If I was an esper, then I might say, there's a core theme of this symbolic entity, which relates strongly to me, yes, but it also encapsulates a specific collective sentiment. In the case of the colored animal, as an esper, the more closely I have specified myself in the symbol, the more I will be able to act as an, ag as an agent in changing the persistent, the persistent symbolic messaging implied by that colored animal. So if I feel I have a lot of control over the symbol. I really feel like, in my heart, like my emotional values with respect to this symbol, maybe it's a blue butterfly or something, are so strongly orientated towards me, I can really change the direction a story takes when it foreshadows or follows an aesthetic related to that symbol, which is so emotionally entangled as an egregore of mine in my inner world. I can even make predictions or projections about others who are sensitive to the symbol, because the symbol is more than a symbol. It's a thought form, a meme, uh, an actor, an agronomous, you know, imaginal space. So. Here's another example of an esper, a person whose insights make inroads into what people tend to conceptualize. Let's say you have an esper of no particular renown with this idea about uncertainty in the quantum sense and the dual particle wave structure of light being a solid philosophical premise for the fundamental reality of consciousness. Let's say that, um, Back then, this idea is really rare, and the Esper writes about it, but sees from site analytics only a dozen or two read what they've written in the day-to-day -day world. But eventually, or at some point, maybe a year or two down the line, maybe five years, the idea seems to be spontaneously accessible to people that have never interacted with the Esper before. Now, it is not because those people are listening to the things the Esper wrote or copying them. 
they have independently reached the same conclusion. Basically, the idea is that the difference between the Esper having this insight and anyone else having this insight is the degree of accessibility others will have in reaching the same insight. So if I, as an Esper, um, uh, say, discover through my own means that um, consciousness is the basis of um, the basis of reality. Um, my having that, having that epiphany, coming to that conclusion, is different from other people because I sow my seeds in the collective in a way that makes it so that my ideas are going to spread more, even if they spread to even one person. Let's say that's because I published it on the internet, or let's say that it's because in the morphogenetic field, my insight has, has a big oomph. So I'm saying an esper is a person like that, a person whose insight has a big oomph. When roads in the psyche are well tread, the brain has a very easy time accessing the road and sending information along it. This is true for everything that we do, think, or say. Repeated elicitation makes neurological impressions, but I propose ideas also do this, and so do emotions. The more active they, they are in many people, the closer to conscious space these ideas stay. Simultaneous scientific breakthrough is relatively common because humanity collectively reaches milestones in knowledge for many people to put the puzzle together at different times. But when the puzzle becomes solvable, it changes everybody's timeline. A born idea has an attraction field, so even the conception of a potential leaves breadcrumbs that can be followed to a fully realized form to someone somewhere in some temporal space. And the Esper's ideas are probably going to be noticed faster and in more contexts than the, with the average observer. I guess you might call this rapid prescience. 